the blend of a femoral. Nice tug right where it is. Touching the wood boss with the humerus. Proprio clavicular would attach to a few things. Growing fascia. Clavicle, good. Ortho acromial between corticoid process and acromion process. Ortho clavicular between corticoid process and clavicle. Okay, so all of them tell you where they are. Just remembering the word is going to be the part that you have to do. Uh, so blood out humeral ligament right here goes from the glenoid fossa over to the humerus. Uh, a lot of this is part of the joint capsule. So we're not going to ask you to name the different parts of glenohumeral ligament. We're not going to ask you to identify them in lab on a prosection. Just no glenohumeral ligament on this picture. Okay. The rest of them we have good examples in lab with the prosections. You can see them very well. You have chromioclavicular attaching with the structure. Get a chromium process over to the clavicle. Uh, Corticoacromial, who is the structure? Okay, coracoid process attaches from there over to the acromion process. Uh, this one usually is coracoclavicular between the coracoid process and clavicle. Sometimes at first it's hard to find if you don't know what you're looking for. <laughs> On those pro sections, again, we're going to provide you guys with gloves. You can lift the clavicle up a little bit off of the coracoid process. And those ligaments can be right underneath the clavicle between that and the coracoid process. Uh, coracoid process is actually when you can also feel on yourself. Uh, if you feel like right under your clavicle, almost close to where your bra strap's going down. Guys, good luck. You can feel like a little bump under the clavicle. Probably doesn't feel too great pushing on it but that should be your coracoid process. Um, any of you PT? All right, so this is actually something that is nice to know where it is because the muscles attach to it. And a lot of times these chest muscles get pretty tight because we all sit like this all the time uh, on our computer and these muscles tighten, uh, especially pec minor. And one good way to stretch it out is to put kind of a towel right along the midline of the back and push on the uh, coracoid process and stretch that muscle. Um, so it's somewhat useful to know where it actually is, especially if you're going to PT. More than you guys like here to know today. Uh, rotator cuff muscles, pretty much right now what you need to know are rotator cuff muscles are mainly there to stabilize the shoulder joint. So he said strengthening these rotator cuff muscles is helpful to protect your joint from popping out of place. Uh, we will learn these names. And actually the cool part about some of these names, supraspinatus, where do you think that muscle sits? <coughs> Good, supraspinatus fossa above the spine. Infraspinatus. Infraspinatus fossa. Good. Subscapularis. Subscapular fossa. You can find these easily on your own. You don't even need us anymore. You know where these bones are far. Uh, Terry's minor might be the only one you would have a hard time finding and sitting right next to him for spinatus. But again, right now, you just know these rotator cuff muscles are stabilizing the shoulder joint. We're going to get into the actual muscles, be able to identify them. We'll talk about the nerves going to them, their axons and everything so much later that we don't need to force you right now. Uh, Elbow joint, back real quick. Elbow joint would most likely be a model or a picture. So I was looking at the elbow joint on a donor. It's pretty difficult to identify these ligaments. Uh, there's so much connective tissue and uh, stuff around it that eh, good luck finding these. So from this side, we have the medial view. So you're looking at this medial side. Maybe you got the medial epicondyle, that bump you can feel on your medial side of the humerus. You got the ulna sitting right down here so that it can attach at your elbow joint. Up here we have radius. So if you're looking at this medial view, right there, that ligament attaching ulna up to the humerus, ulnar collateral ligament. On um, these collateral, you're going to see some collateral ligaments in the knee also. Remember, collaterals are 
two running kind of parallel next to each other on the lateral sides of the joint. You consider the middle of the joint, midline, on the lateral sides of that joint where you'll find the collateral ligament. So ulnar collateral is on the medial ulnar side, on your pinky side. And on the opposite side, the radial side, so now we're looking at lateral view, lateral epicondyle, can you still see all that radius? Radial collateral ligament. Radial collateral is attaching a little bit both to radius and ulna. So radial, look for sort of that Y shape. Sideways Y, maybe we're like in a skating sign or something. I don't know. Uh, so you guys, picture your model, that's the easiest to pick out. And then the annular ligament is going around the head of the radius. If these are on the test, I'll let you know if we're looking at a lateral and medial view. That should also help you decide which way. You can see annular from both sides. So right there, annular, going around head of radius. But again, I'll tell you this is the medial side. So if you know medial, the ulna's on that side, ulnar collateral from lateral view to more your radius side, it feels radial collateral. That can be easy enough for you guys. Uh, looks like your tissue's here, so you guys made it through all of these. So in lab next week, you guys will get through this uh, articulation lab a little faster so you have more time to work hands on with your uh, prosection. And again, next week we are getting prosections out, so you have to have lab coats closed toed shoes, and do not pull a cell phone out. Uh, do not take Snapchats of her section. You can't take selfies with them. Be mature, be responsible in there. If, if any of your GTAs or you